The adventurous trip of this father and daughter took a dark turn when they didn't return from their mountain hike. The mother, who stayed home, did everything she could to investigate her family's sudden disappearance, but all her efforts were futile. And, but then, 10 years later, she suddenly received a mysterious letter. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Here we are Jackie said as she stopped the car at the airport's kiss and ride. Her husband John and Deether Sarah would go on an adventurous hiking trip in Peru without her, but it was because of Jackie's pushing they were going. Don't let me stop you from achieving your dream, she urged them. Jackie returned home after a quick but emotional goodbye, and in the following days, John and Sarah shared many pictures and videos of their hikes. It was apparent they were immensely enjoying the trip, and Jackie was happy that she had key had convinced her husband and daughter to go. It lay, but that feeling would soon change. Change. It was weird for Jackie to be alone at home, but she kept herself busy, and before she knew it, the last day of her family's trip had arrived. Sarah called to inform her that they planned one final hike before boarding the flight home. Good luck and be safe, Jackie said before hanging up. As Jackie was used to by now, her phone remained silent while John and Sarah were hiking. She would get pictures and messages after they were done, but the silence was longer this time. Yeah, they should have been back by now, Jackie eventually mumbled to herself. She grabbed her phone and tried to contact her family, but their phones would go to voicemail and the messages weren't read. But Jackie paced up and down her living room when she suddenly looked at the clock and felt relieved. She realized their plane was already in the air. They were probably too much in a hurry to update me, Jackie convinced herself. Not the yes, and that worked because her worries were slowly fading away. A Jackie was convinced her family was aboard the plane and tracked it online to ensure she would be at the airport on time to pick them up. But when the plane landed and the passengers arrived in the main hall, John and Sarah weren't there. Jackie's faded worries instantly returned in overwhelming proportions. Where was her family? Why didn't they respond? She hurried to the airline officials, who informed Jackie that her family never got on the plane. It was like a truck ran over her body when the officials said it and pure panic came over her. Her vision became blurry as her heart pounded in her chest and her breathing quickened. What was going on? Why didn't they respond? Why weren't they on the plane? Jackie tried to regain herself and thought of what to do. I need to find them, she mumbled as she ran toward the nearest police station. Still upset but trying to be as clear as possible, Jackie explained the situation to the officers and in no time the authorities organized a search party. Jackie didn't hesitate to fly out and help with the search, as she knew exactly where her family went and which trial they took, but one day that suddenly changed when Jackie went to check her mailbox. She frowned when she saw a weird letter inside and grabbed it. It was all yellowy brown and seemed to have had quite the journey as it had many creases and even some damage. Was the letter intrigued her immediately. Without glancing at the other contents of her mailbox, Jackie hurried back inside to open the mysterious letter. Apart from her address, nothing else was visible on the outside, but when she opened it, her breathing halted. The letter came from Peru. Her hands trembled as she hurriedly read it. It took Jackie a moment to recover from this unbelievably unexpected development. She was not even halfway through the letter and was already overwhelmed by it, but as quickly as the shock overwhelmed her, as quickly she regained. If this letter contained information about her family, she must continue reading. Bims, but as Jackie's eyes hurried over the lines on the paper, she was disappointed to find nothing concrete about her family's location. However, the letter did contain something promising, but it gave her a rather ominous feeling. It can meet me at these coordinates if you want to find your family, she mumbled. Jackie wanted nothing more, and this was the first thing in 10 years that felt like a real lead. But the letter was very mysterious and ended with a warning. That last question lingered on her mind. The letter was mysterious but was the first lead in 10 years and contained promising information. Her husband's and daughter's names were mentioned and it was sent from the same country where they disappeared. Jackie was hesitant but realized she had no choice. She had to go. Jackie booked a flight and headed toward the coordinates. Part of the reason why she was convinced to go was because the coordinates guided her to a town near her family's disappearance. When she, when she arrived at the motel, she thought about the letter's warning and gave a fake name and reason for her stay. Jackie left in a hurry and only brought a small bag of essentials so she didn't have to unpack and could immediately continue her journey. She had researched the coordinates on her flight and discovered they led to a house. She went over to observe before gathering her courage and doing as the letter instructed. How did you get in here? That's the man snapped at her as he closed the distance between them. Jackie was shocked by the sudden appearance and the man's heavy accent made it hard to understand him. Eventually, she realized what to do and explained the letter and the key, which had a surprising effect. The man's dark expression changed immediately. His eyebrows lifted, revealing light blue eyes, immediately making him look more friendly. I'm sorry for the rudeness, but I had to be sure it was you. You can't be careful enough around here? The man said gently as he gestured for her to follow. 
Jackie was recovering from shock and followed the man hesitantly into the next room. He introduced himself as Arturo Garcia and said he was thankful she had accepted his invitation. That was all Jackie needed to hear. He was the one who sent. A J the letter. Where's my family? Tss, are they all right? She interrupted him. But what Jackie asked with a tremble in her voice, afraid of what the man had withheld. I'm not sure for how long this information will still be correct, Arturo answered. And when he saw Jackie's confused look, he added that they might move at any point. And then I can't help you anymore, Jackie's eyes widened and she stood up and out of her chair. What are we waiting on? We have to move fast, she exclaimed, but then she realized something. What do you mean they could move at any moment? Is tease. And how do you know all this? She asked the man, who suddenly looked very small. Arturo turned away before speaking as if he was ashamed. The man explained that he was part of the group that kept her family captive. Jackie didn't know what she heard. See, the group held them captive? And he was part of them? She looked around nervously, afraid she had walked into a trap. Jackie slowly backed away from Arturo, but when he heard her footsteps, he turned back and saw her worried expression. It he tried to reason with her, and I'm not part of them anymore. Arturo explained that John and Sarah were being kept by the local gang that terrorized the area. They were the unofficial rulers and had the cops and other important people on their payroll. Your family was in the wrong place at the wrong time and witnessed something. They shouldn't have, he said. The man explained that they kept her family alive as workers for the gang, which was the reason why they could be moved at any moment. Arturo was assigned to guard them, and they started to bond over the years. They made me a better man. Yet I owe them deeply, he said with a tremble. I promised them to contact you and try to help them, Arturo continued. But it was hard as there were few trusty people. He didn't want to contact Jackie before he had a plan and acquired a crew. But it took longer than expected. But now, two years after leaving the gang, he was ready. Arturo smiled at her, clearly happy she agreed to come with him. He told her to remain patient and made a call. Half an hour later, a knock was on the door and five men entered the room. This is the trusty crew I gathered that will help us break your family out, Arturo said. The group gathered around and Arturo talked them through the plan. Jackie listened closely, determined to get her family back after 10 years. And we will sneakingly infiltrate the gang's hideout out in the woods. I know where it is, but we must be careful and it will be dangerous, Arturo said. The man looked at Jackie for a long time, but she didn't care about danger. Gins all she cared about was getting her family back. She made it this far. There was nothing that could stop her now. This realization caused Jackie to gain more and more faith in Arturo and his story. The group ventured deeper into the forest and then suddenly halted. But she looked around in confusion, there was nothing to see. Why had they stopped? Then Arturo moved toward the stone wall and moved the vegetation a secret entrance. Jackie saw the men vanish into the hideout one by one. Her heart was pounding against her chest. This was it. She was going to enter the camp and see her family again. But she was the last to enter and shereed after the group as quietly as possible. They ventured into the camp and then, the group halted behind some rocks in the shade, and when Jackie looked around, her heart leaped. She was looking right at her husband and daughter inside a cage. He had to use all her self-control not to let out a scream of joy and anger or to run toward them. Arturo quickly broke open the cage and urged John and Sarah to follow. There's no time for reunions. We have to go now, the man yelled as the family was happy to see each other again. The group hurried toward the exit and as they did, they started to hear a ruckus behind them. Their escape was noticed, and the group tried to go even faster. They left the cave and followed Arturo deep into the forest. Then, the trees suddenly diverged and a clearing appeared. Man used the car and follow the map, he said as he pointed toward the vehicle. We will ensure you get away. The map guided the family toward a city outside the gang's control, and they got the first flight home. Once there, they finally felt safe and shared an emotional reunion. Sarah and John took a couple weeks to fully recover, during which they got an update from Arturo that everything worked out perfectly.